Good morning, dear friends. Brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I greet you. Welcome to this morning meditation on God's Word. This is a brand new day the Lord has given you and me that we may live a cleaner life and uh, glorify the Lord, which is made possible as we continue to meditate on God's wonderful Word. Let His Word fill our minds and our hearts and our, our, our imaginations. Today's meditation is a study on Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 to 6. And therefore, I would like to read this passage for you. It says, Apostle Paul says, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world, and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. It is a wonderfully a very rich message for us to understand and then rejoice in what God has done for our lives. You know, regenerated people, Christians, should show more sympathy and uh, understanding when dealing with unregenerated people. Because verses 1 to 4 of Ephesians chapter 2 reveal a major reason it should be so why we should be more sympathetic and merciful when dealing with unregenerate people. Such people are still living in transgressions and in sin. And uh, all who are without Christ are controlled by the ruler of the air, as this passage says. And who is this ruler of the air? Satan himself. Their minds are blinded by Satan to the truth of God in verse 2. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, also says, the God of this age has blinded their eyes. Now they are enslaved to sin and the cravings of the sinful nature. Because of this spiritual condition of uh, the unregenerated people, they cannot um, uh, understand the truth apart from the grace of God. You know, even to know and even to understand and even to uh, uh, ex accept God's grace, God himself has to show grace to us to do these things. Even to be willing to surrender our lives also is given by God alone. And uh, for this reason, Christian must see everyone uh, from the biblical perspective. Those involved in immorality and pride are to be pitied because they are enslaved by sin and uh, Satan, verses 1 to 3 of the same passage. Those who are without Christ are still responsible for their sin because God always gave certain light and grace by which they may seek God and escape sin's bondage through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is what makes us 
acceptable to God and that will give God an opportunity to work on you and accept you. The second thing that we like you to notice in this passage is uh, the unregenerate people are said to be dead in their transgressions and sins. In a sense, they are dead to the things of God. And so no matter what you try to tell them, they will not be attracted. They will not even, even, even show any kind of interest. Now, uh, they are not sensitive. First, they were blind. And that blindness led them to death. They are dead while they are breathing. They are still alive. They just have an existence. Are really not enjoying the full life that God intends for them to possess by faith in Jesus Christ. Remember what happened in the Garden of Eden. God created man and a woman to live as husband and wife and uh, place them in that beautiful garden to live forever in a relationship with God the Creator. And God has given them authority and rulership over all other creations that He made. And they have to exercise, they were to exercise that uh, authority and rulership under God forever. It is for this purpose that God created man. They could eat the fruit of uh, almost all the trees in that garden, except there was one particular tree, which was known as the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God said, you shall not even touch it and you shall not eat it. The day you eat, if you eat, you will die. That's what God said. And uh, they were happy and God was delighted and uh, both man and God enjoyed such beautiful relationship and companionship and uh, uh, fellowship, close fellowship. Adam and Eve were fully alive. They were in charge and they could even communicate with the animals. Animals were their friends. Then something terrible happened. What happened? Satan arrived in the Garden of Eden with his one agenda, and that was to thwart the plan of God for humanity. For man, God has such a wonderful, beautiful plan. And he wanted to thwart. And for man to live forever in relationship with God. And with God given authority over other creatures and creations. That was God's plan. God's plan was never for them to die and, and destroy themselves. Eve was at the arrival of Satan. With this plan, Eve was attracted towards Satan, who was uh, in, the, in, the, in the tree. And she was tempted to eat the fruit. The forbidden fruit. And the devil cleverly uh, tempted her. How? By first through her mind, the devil started attacking the mind. He whispered into the ears of Eve. See, look at the fruit, how attractive. And if it is so attractive to look at how wonderful it will be to eat. And these suggestions were pumped, injected into the minds. And my friends, I want to say by passing, this 
is the way the devil trap you. He first attacks the mind. And if uh, anyone can capture the mind of a man, another person, you can have him as your slave. And that's what happened in the Garden of Eden. Through the mind, he tempted. And he also said, you know, did uh, God the Father told you not to eat? She said, yes. And he said, the day we will eat, we will die. But the devil said, no, you are not going to die. He knows the day you eat, you will become like God. That's why he said all that. Not because he loves you. And at the end, Eve ate the fruit. By then, Adam, which was away from her for a moment, returned. And she gave some to her husband, Adam, also. Now the question is, did they die? Many people have that question, especially young people. They say, God said the day you eat, you will die. But they did not die. And they lived, you know, so many years, more than 900 years each. And my friends, when you understand what that death meant, you will have no problem. Yes, the question, the answer to that question is, yes, they truly died. But how? Not physically, but spiritually. Man is created as a triune being. He has a spirit, he has a soul, he has a body. It was the spirit in man which died. And you must understand, both the soul and the body receives life through the spirit. It was the spirit in man. And that spiritual death, when the spirit in man died, it robbed man of eternity and entered into his body and soul, that poison of death. Only the presence of the spirit that can keep the body and soul alive. And it is when that spirit is dead, you are truly, and that's how death entered into humanity. The day they ate that forbidden food. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 and verse 6 says, We are dead in our transgressions and in our sins. Verse 6 says, And God raised us up with Christ. In verse 5, Paul says, God who is rich in mercy. Now listen this verse very carefully. I am reading for you. God who is rich in mercy made us alive. Where? Within us. That inward life, that inside life of the spirit that kept our body and soul healthy. That was lying there dead. And that is why it is written so. He made us alive. Made whom? Are we, were we not alive before we accepted Christ? Yeah, for all reasons. We were walking, we were breathing, we were eating, doing our work. It seems to be we were alive, but not really. We were, when the, from the day we were born, we were traveling towards our grave. Slowly, slowly, death creeps in. And ultimately we die. But God who is rich in mercy made us alive even when we were dead. Take note of this. We were dead in transgressions and in sin. What did God do? Not only he made us alive, but he raised us up with Christ and seated us with him 
in heavenly realms. Thanks be to God. Where in Christ and Jesus. It is by grace we are saved that God may show the riches of his grace in the ages to come. It is in this we see the riches of his mercy, riches of his grace. And that spiritual life within us must be made alive, resurrected. And that resurrection happens the moment you or I believe the gospel message and surrender our lives to the Lordship of Jesus and invite him to come into our hearts. By the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our life, he brought life and immortality to man. And when he enters in, death cannot stay dead. The resurrection of Christ actually means the death of death. And that's what happened when he died on the cross. And then he rose again. When he rose again, that was the death of death. For those who are in Christ today, therefore, there is no more death. We don't need to be afraid. And this is the way we are made alive in Christ. And when the spirit within us is alive, quicken, we are quickened and we become active in the things of God. And we are so receptive, the word of God, receptive to the will of God. We begin to enjoy real life, life in Jesus. It is to be enjoyed in this life now. And when Jesus comes, we are changed into his image and into his likeness. May the Lord bless you as you meditate on this and understand the meaning of what it means when the Bible says through the Apostle Paul, he made us alive and then he raised us up and lifted us up and now seated at the right hand of God the Father in Jesus Christ, who is our life. And the Colossians chapter Paul says in chapter 3, now we are dead, but now our life is hid in Christ Jesus. And when Christ who is our life appears, we too shall appear with him in glory. It is all blessings of the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. I pray, O Lord God, that everyone who shall listen to this message shall rise up to a new understanding to enjoy the fullness of a life within us. And when life within us becomes alive, our body and our soul all become alive and active for the kingdom of God. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, my friends. Enjoy this day and glorify God. Amen.